Cardiorespiratory fitness or aerobic fitness is an objective measure of how well we can get oxygen from the environment into our lungs, into the bloodstream, and into our muscles and other organs. Why is cardiorespiratory fitness so important is because there's many studies that show that having low cardiorespiratory fitness is associated with higher risks of mortality. For example, there was a meta-analysis of over 100,000 people that found that those with lower cardiorespiratory fitness had almost a 70% higher relative risk of mortality, meaning death, and a 55% increased risk of having cardiovascular disease. Now, cardiorespiratory fitness is largely determined by our genetics and our age. As people age, their cardiorespiratory fitness tends to decline. And there are studies that show that for every decade, cardiorespiratory fitness tends to decrease about 3% or so. But as people get older in their 70s, then cardiorespiratory fitness can decline more sharply by about 20% every decade or so. But the good news is that we can improve our cardiorespiratory fitness through exercise. And in this video, I'll discuss what types of exercise and what intensity of exercise is needed to help improve cardiorespiratory fitness most effectively. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. What type of exercise should we focus on to improve cardiorespiratory fitness? Should it be aerobic exercise or resistant training? And so it appears from some of the studies that actually a combined approach of including both of these may be most effective and have the most benefit. For example, there's a meta-analysis of 34 studies with almost 2,000 participants with an average age of about 60 years. And in this study, they found that progressive resistant training improved cardiorespiratory fitness by about 17%, and aerobic training improved it by about 21%, so very close. But what they found also was that combined training, meaning both aerobic and strength training, when you did those together, was more effective at improving cardiorespiratory fitness than just doing aerobic training alone. The next question is, what intensity of exercise do we need to do to get the benefits for cardiorespiratory fitness improvement? Can it be light intensity? Does it moderate intensity? Does it have to be high intensity? So there was a study that enrolled about 100 sedentary, healthy women between the ages of 20 and 40 years of age. And they randomized into one of four different groups. One was high intensity aerobic walkers. Those are people who are walking at about 85% of their maximal heart rate. Brisk walkers that were walking where their heart rate was about 65% of the maximal heart rate. Strollers were at 55% of their maximal heart rate. And then just sedentary controls, people who weren't doing anything. So we had four groups. And these people were doing about five kilometers per day, five days per week for 24 weeks. And here's what they found. They found that those people who are the high intensity walkers increased their cardiorespiratory fitness by 16%. The brisk walkers improved it by 9% and strollers by 4%. So as we increase our intensity, we get larger and larger gains in our cardiorespiratory fitness. There are different methods of how to introduce intensity into our exercise training. There could be high intensity interval training, or you might have moderate intensity continuous training. Someone for high intensity interval training, maybe they'll cycle or run as hard as they can for a minute, and then for the next two minutes or so, take it a little bit easier, not stressing them out, and then keep repeating this for several cycles. That's high intensity interval training. The other option might be moderate intensity continuous training, which is where maybe you're just doing a moderate intensity cycling or running where your heart rate's just at a moderate increased level for let's say a straight 30 minutes. So these are two different ways of introducing intensity into exercise. And so the next question is, is which one works better for improving cardiorespiratory fitness? So to answer this question, there was a meta-analysis of about 17 studies that included over 500 people. And they directly compared the effects of the high intensity interval training to moderate intensity continuous training protocols. And what they found was that high intensity interval training was more effective in improving cardiorespiratory fitness. And comparing the high intensity interval to the moderate intensity continuous training, they found significantly larger improvements, 40 to 80% higher improvements in cardiorespiratory fitness in the high intensity interval training group. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, cardiorespiratory fitness is important for longevity. 
Number two, both aerobic training and resistant training can help improve cardiorespiratory fitness. Number three, combined training, doing both aerobic and strength training can have more beneficial effects on your health and longevity. Number four, high intensity interval training leads to greater gains in cardiorespiratory fitness than does moderate intensity continuous training. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.